So how are we doing guys and welcome, it's Kraken here, back in 7 Days to Die Alpha 19. And we're now going to continue our tips and tricks series. So we did a lot of this for Alpha 18, testing different things. We did a mining video, we tested explosives. But we're going to now do all of those kind of things again in individual little videos to see what's changed between Alpha 18, Alpha 19 and to see what's going to be the most effective to keep ourselves alive. I'm sure by now a lot of you have already seen that um, Ja Woodle managed to break the zombie AI within about 20 seconds flat, so well done for you Josh. Um, the fun people going to have to try a lot harder if they ever think they're actually going to be able to defeat you with that with the killing corridor. Now, the base I want to show you today, this is going to be a zombie hall base has a little bit of that kind of idea of the killing corridor that is going to be raised up off the ground but it's got a slightly different design that i much preferred in alpha 18. so normally i would build this on the side of a poi but as i haven't got any pois in this world we're just going to build our own base Here we go then, just something to get us completely started. Just imagine that this over here would be a POI, maybe uh, one of the stores, something like that, which has got a little roof area that you could use to store a few different bits and bobs on. I've used the laundrette before, I've used uh, Buzz's Bar, usually some of the smaller POIs. The back of the pawn shop is really good for this, just so you've got a little area here on top which is really useful. Some of the wreck buildings as well are actually really good for this. And we're going to have a ramp like this. Now what I love about having the ramps is that the zombies only have one clear way of getting to you. So what I normally do is always put myself in here a couple of hatches. So we are going to be using the creative menu to build these at a nice nice fast rate but what we are doing is building everything out of cobblestone so that we can actually see straight away there we go one of those like that so we can actually see what damage the zombies are actually going to be able to do to the base so we're not going to be making this out of solid steel there we go Put that over there, and we now need to put a staircase over here. Just like that, there we go. Now one thing I do like to do with all of my bases is make sure that they're evolvable. So, to begin with, I'd make this nice and simple, so it's only one block wide to begin with, and then we can evolve and make this. So, in the end, this is going to be three blocks wide, then coming down into a bit of a pincer down here, because we only want the actual part that we're going to be doing the killing, which is going to be about halfway down here. Uh, we only want that one block wide. Because three blocks wide, you can get too many zombies in one spot and that can cause some issues. So keeping it one block wide will funnel the zombies really nicely. So now we have a set of goalposts set up just like this. And we're now going to use our flagstone pole. Change that to advanced rotation and set this up just like this. Now to make this even stronger, we are going to double these up. Oh, press R and go backwards. Love that little addition. 
and we're going to double those up like that and this is all just the basic cobblestone cobblestone now the basic cobblestone is extremely weak so we've only got 500 hit points there so that is not going to take long to actually cause some damage by the zombies now if we were to spawn a couple of people in like this they should see the only path to me is through here so we're going to spawn a few ferals into the distance here here they go so we've got their attention now finally and they come straight for us so i'm going to leave it on god mode just for a second because stamina is a real big issue in this alpha so this should sort them out we've only got a level one baseball bat here as you can see i'm only level 104 so i have next to nothing specked in here we go comes around again and straight away they disappear so there we go that's actually got me two skill points which is very nice so the only route they can see for me is here now i do know that when the zombies do fall, depending on the height that they actually fall from, they can go into a random mode where they just start destroying everything. So something to upgrade in the future is to fill this all in, all the way across, obviously apart from here, because this is going to be our last little retreat section if everything all goes downhill. So we've got that like that. And we can see that that is going to be absolutely fine. They did a bit of damage to that one. And that's all the damage they actually did. So we weren't upgrading that, which you can do as you go along. Now, obviously, we all know that the vultures have got a lot worse in this alpha than they ever used to be. They're always a pain. But now, we've still got one down there that never came across. Um, now they're a lot worse. So we need to build ourselves some kind of vulture defense and yes we could do that by putting in shotgun turrets and things like that but we want to look at the beginning the basic part of the game the beginning of the game so what i've actually done on my experiment season um my day seven i didn't actually see any vultures but day 14 i saw quite a few vultures and i just built it up like this and that was it as simple as that i didn't do any more than this the next kind of variation onto this would be to build yourself into a nice little tunnel. Now I found in Alpha 18 that worked brilliantly. That the zombies could not actually see you. So making a tunnel for yourself to actually be in is a really, really useful little thing. So we're going to make this now into basic tunnel for us. Right, there we go. So we've just upgraded this and we've taken it all the way down to the bottom now. Now, I actually really like upgrading the wooden blocks because wood's super, super easy to get at the beginning of the game. Just knock yourself down a couple of trees. And when you upgrade it, it only actually takes 10 cobblestone rocks and it goes to this second level of flagstone or cobblestone, which is straight away 1,500 hit points compared to the 500 of this and it still costs 10 to upgrade this and I think it's all cobblestone is it to make a cobblestone or a flagstone block yeah so you're actually using 14 cobblestone and it's much easier just to knock yourself down at a couple of trees and make yourself some cobblestone the great thing is you can pick those blocks up and if you accidentally place something you just pick it back up and away you can go again. So I want to test this against now the cops because the great thing about having a corridor like this is that the cops should not spit at you until you actually they can actually see you. So being hidden in here is really good. Now we're going to need to just upgrade this to the next layer of cobblestone because having 500 hit points and if we put a few feral cops into the mix that is going to cause us a multitude of problems. Right, now let's quickly try that with the cops and the spitting now. 
Now these guys are going to be a lot, lot stronger. So we'll get ourselves two ferals in. Grab their attention. See, so as soon they don't start spitting until they start coming up here. So one thing I really liked about this base compared to the hatch base that I made was the fact that with the hatch base we used to have to use Molotov's grenades to kill off spiders and zombie dogs because a lot of the time if you had a hatch down here and you were using the hatch to protect yourself the only problem with that is a lot of the time you couldn't actually get to the heads of the dogs or the zombies which was a real big issue so we use this design in our fists only because if we couldn't get to the heads of the zombies and the dogs with the hatch design even though that was probably the most ultimate base I made in Alpha 18 if I couldn't get to the heads to hit them I wasn't going to be much use to me so this is why we tried this idea it actually worked really well so let's get ourselves a couple of dogs and we'll quickly spawn those in we've got their attention straight away so they're going to come straight on up and as you can see straight away we can actually get to their heads now alpha 19 the animals do stack a lot more than they did in 18. Alpha 19 they do stack a lot more. So there we go so the dogs not a problem let's now try that again with the spiders. There we go and again we can get straight to their heads without much of an issue. Beautiful there should be one more out there. No, he's run off into the wilderness to live out his own kind of life. Decided not to want to end up like his friend over here. So here we go, just coming up on our first horror night then, just to test this. So our game stage is nice and low. Game stage 9, so it isn't going to be a massive, massive horde. But this is probably around the kind of game stage that we would see your first kind of horror night. Now I hope stamina is not going to be too much of an issue with this but we are seeing Homer there straight away we've got the new janitor zombie there which I really like the look of and one thing I have noticed between Alpha 18 and 19 is in Alpha 19 they seem to be able to reach a lot heavier a lot further here so you've got a lot more chance of being hit with this design compared to the last design so that's something that you've got to be a little bit weary of but one thing they don't seem to be trying to hit the bars anywhere near as much as they used to but they do stack a lot more than they ever used to but with this kind of design they've got no chance of actually getting into you so like i said everything that i like to do with my bases is about progression so let's quell ourselves through here so the next thing that i would do to this base myself would be to make this walkway here slightly wider. Right, let's just get the stairs onto this now. All the way up. There we go, we'll put the corner bits on which really do help for stopping the zombies getting caught up at the bottom here. That's the last thing you want. You want them to get up to you as easy as possible, especially with this type of base design. What I like about this base design is they've made the progression now so much slower. A base design like this where you get all the XP is you can really use melee up until you start seeing the really stronger zombies right there we go we are going to upgrade these what we want to do here is now make a funnel type system so i'm going to use the wooden blocks just to make sure that we're using the right kind of blocks here right so i'm thinking something like this which means that we can then use the next block which is this one here 
and put that like that and then do the same the other side there we go and then we can use the full block this side like this and this and then we can just upgrade that to this wedge shape here there we go so we've now got it three wide and then coming into a nice little funnel bring in the zombies just to that one little spot here right so let's now try this against a few bigger zombies and see if this is going to cause us any issues right there we go so it doesn't really look anything like op anymore from sons of anarchy now we are going to have a problem here with our stamina by the time we see a load of these we are going to be later on in the game they still can't actually make it through to us because they're just that big they had a bit more room here to all stack up against me and they only managed to knock out two of these blocks and they're only 1500 each now by the time you get to day 14 you should be able to get yourself a load of concrete mix wherever you buy it from the trader or you find a cement mixer out in the world somewhere or even crafted your own because you might have got the schematic from one of the traders that you found you should be able to get yourself some wet concrete now you don't need much wet concrete to upgrade all of this there you go so we've only actually used 160 so that's only 320 to put all of this here to reinforce concrete so while we're letting that concrete too dry we may as well make ourselves fairly useful and start work by upgrading this to the ultimate horde base Right, by the looks of it, most of the concrete up there has now dried. Now, I really do not like this bit here. Because this bit here is something the zombies are really going to get stuck on. But we are going to be building onto that. So we need to use another 160 concrete here. I'm actually only going to do the middle two because ending on this next section... You might need to get rid of these blocks here, but let's um, let's have a look at this. So we already know from the cops that they only start spitting when they can see you. So the more of this we can make into a tunnel, the better it's actually going to be for us. Using arrow slits like this, we can now start making the electrical part of our base. Now with a design like this, putting these two T-bits onto the sides, it is going to cause us a little bit of problems with the zombies getting caught up on this, but we can angle this off here and do the same on the other side like this. So we can angle those off just to keep the zombies off them because that will cause us an issue. Having a little design like this does mean we can now set this up perfectly with electrical traps. So if we were to get ourselves... The electric fence posts, we need a wire tool. And we also need to get these trip wires here as well. We can now set these up perfectly to now cause an electric shock before they get here to stop them hitting on these posts as much. Now I always actually prefer setting these one into the ground. So it actually hits them lower down. So we're actually going to take this block off here like this. Same one up there. 
and one up there. Now the troop wire we are actually going to have higher up. So we have the trip wire from here to here. The trip wire we are going to use for our next section, which is going to be up here. Now the great thing is we can actually hide all of this with plates. So if we go into here, flagstone plate, we can now actually hide all of this stuff here behind plates. There we go, so now everything is nicely boxed in, but we do need to cover the front parts up. Now this does cause us a little bit of an issue here because of these wedge tips here. So we're going to sacrifice those wedge tips to put in these plates here and change these to the flagstone ramps. So now we still have the same kind of funnel design, but we actually have a whole area here now that we can put ourselves completely behind another part of the tunnel. So after a lot of messing about and playing around, this seemed like the best scenario to do here. So this is actually going to be supported by all of this up here. And doing it like this, it means that the zombies are not going to get caught up anywhere around here. And we can actually put plates along here if we want to, just to make them run all the way through. Right, so playing through many, many different options, this seems to be the best version I can think of to stop the zombies from getting caught up on any of this down here. Because whenever you've got a ramp block or anything like that, it helps the zombies just deflect off the side of the building. And we have the entranceway complete now. So we're actually funneling the zombies all the way from here into this little trap here. And no better way to do that than knocking a hole straight to them because this is our main line of defense, this concrete here. So we can make a direct route to these and then block ourselves off here using this section that we've just made over here. So here we have it, step number one. We can now get to the electrical fence posts. So from here, we can now repair these. Again, I've just done it on the one side for the minute. But from here, we can get to the electrical fence post without having to be knelt down or anything like that. So we can keep the repair parts on us to then hit these electrical fence posts and make sure that we can keep them running the whole horde night without having to be too close to here. So we can actually be as far back as here, so we're not going to get hit by anything. For the next part, we now have the dart trap, which is why we have the trip posts that we've set up in here because we don't want that thing going off continuously so we only want them when they're in this little kill zone right here so i love this new little animation that the little drawing here that actually shows where the dart trap which way it's actually going to be shooting so we put our dart trap in there put another little block up here which we can upgrade and now we can wire that up which is being totally protected in here. So if we want to, we can put a quick little plate on top of here 
if we don't want the voltage to be able to spit down on that when we start getting the irradiated voltages so we can quite easily protect that but it's being protected from all the other sides and we can now wire that up to the trip posts that we've put in here so let me get a generator and start wiring all this up so the electric fence post is going to be the easy one because that one we're going to have on all the time we will put a set of boxes around this in a little bit so we can get to it with the fence post literally all we need to do is right click onto the battery bank here bring ourselves down to here and then go from there and then from there right click again go to that one there and that blue line there shows that that is going to be live going through there and we've got those two arrow slits they go through there nicely now to do the dart trap we're going to jump ourselves up here quickly we can set up ladders for this but just to do it we need to go from the power here to the trip wires so we just bring ourselves back down to here and we need to just sneak ourselves into the trip wire from the trip wire this one over here which we can't actually see yet because we haven't built this side let's get back to this trip wire to here and then from the trip wire there to the dart trap so that basically means that purple line there when that gets tripped off that will allow power to go through and then activate the dart trap so as soon as they come up into this little kill zone here, they'll get electric shocks and they'll have the darts shooting down on them. So that's how we've made a perfect little kill zone here for us. Just to keep all this hidden nicely out of the way. Now obviously this is getting into a lot more advanced game stage and gameplay when you start setting up electrical traps and doing this but what I like about the base is the original concept of the base is pretty much the same so what I'm gonna do is set myself up a hatch on here just like that so then we can come into here ourselves off god mode come into here and we can quite easily unlock and lock our ammo in now there's no reason for any zombie to even go near that or try and beat down into that but you might get some accidental vulture spit or something like that on that so i'd probably upgrade that up there and then also what i'm going to do is in over here knock that out and we're going to put hatch door onto that there we go so we can still get to the battery bank so there we have it i'm going to set up a shotgun turret just quickly on top of here as we already have all the electric and everything set up for it and then we're going to try this against another horde and see how we do right 15 in game minutes i have put either game stage right up so our game stage is now 43 we're level 36 so i have done that and i've given myself we've got a load of spare skill points here but i have given myself up to level 3 in pummel pete which again you should be by day 14 you should be somewhere up here if the club is what you're going to use sexy saurus up to three two into heavy armor because i am covered in scrap armor and I've given myself one in pain tolerance and one in healing factor. And we'll leave it like that. So we're not going to be using the guns or anything. The whole design about this base is that it is melee. And let's see how it goes.
So as you can see there, that this is completely OP. Which will help you a lot when you get start getting into the later game stages of the night. Right, let's turn off the dart trap and just have the electrical trap going. Did have a big mama glitch through there. What I love about the baseball bat, by the time you get Sexy Saurus up to three and you have the ergonomic grip on it, you should be able to just basically power attack all night long. And if you get yourself the Skull Crusher candy as well, you do an extra 50% damage. That Skull Crusher candy. I always pick up from the vending machines during the week. This new zombie looks amazing. This new janitor, and as you can see, look, they've done absolutely no damage here whatsoever. So there you have it guys, you can see pretty simply from there, I can hear another vulture out there somewhere. There we go, and it looks like... Looks like we're pretty much done. How many... He's only had to, he had to use four shots so far. There doesn't seem to be any more vultures there. There we go, we'll have a quick little wander about, see if they've done any real damage. There we go, we've got ourselves some nice few bits here. So, one little bit of damage there. Doesn't look like they've done anything else to this wall. Anything to this wall? No. Anything to the staircase? We've got one little bit there. One little bit there. Bit there. But again, nothing overly significant. And you got to remember, this is only the upgraded cobblestone. It's only got 1,500 hit points, this. One piece of cement. Careful of that wire, because he is still alive. There you go, look at where his head is. So you can't really go too far wrong. And he should come up for another go. There we go. He takes some killing, so that's using 4-4 ammo in the new Desert Vulture, rather than calling it a Desert Eagle. And there you go. As easy as that. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This is where I'm going to leave this one. We're on B169 at the moment. There are updates coming all the time at the moment. Please smash that like button if you've enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing if you want to see more 7 Days to Die content. Join our Discord and come and say hello over there. We're always trying to help everybody out play the game. We'll catch you later. Take it easy, guys.
Thank <laughs> you.